Hi everyone, Dr. Dave here. The topic of wearing a face mask has gotten to be really controversial these days. So should you be wearing one? I'll give you my thoughts on that right now. Wearing a face mask has become a political issue, and it really shouldn't be. It's a science issue, it's a health issue, it's an epidemiology issue. But do they work? Should you be wearing one? I think so. We'll talk a little bit about why, but first, let's talk about the different kinds of face masks. The first type of masks are these. These are surgical masks. They are loose-fitting masks, and their primary job is to block respiratory droplets that come from the wearer of the mask. When we cough or sneeze or breathe hard, we can expel these respiratory droplets which then go into the air around us. They can potentially be breathed in by other people which can, you know, make them not happy and even potentially sick. So the purpose of a surgical mask is to block these respiratory droplets from going out around you. When you do that, you prevent other people from getting contaminated with your drops and in general that'll make them happy and maybe even prevent them from getting sick. One important thing to remember is that these surgical masks do not block virus particles. The filter on them just simply isn't small enough. Now, most of the time, viruses are transmitted via these respiratory droplets. So if you block the droplets, then you'll block the virus. But if it's an airborne virus, it won't help you. Now, the next type of mask are these. These are N95 masks or N95 respirators. They are designed to be a tight fitting mask. And in fact, in order to be used properly, they actually have to be fitted to your face. Believe it or not, I would automatically fail a fit test because I have a beard. You cannot have any facial hair because that'll interfere with the tight seal. Now these masks do serve a different function. These actually can block virus particles. And in fact, the name N95 means that they are rated to filter 95% of particles as small as 0.1 to 0.3 microns. So therefore, they can help protect yourself as well as protect other people when you wear them. The last type of mask are these, the cloth masks. Now you can think about them about the same way as you think about a surgical mask. Their main job is to block these respiratory droplets that we expel. Now that we have the masks down, do they help? Should you be wearing one? I think that they do help, and we'll talk about two studies that I think are interesting and help show that point. The first study was done at Mass General Brigham Hospital, and honestly, it's going to be easier to explain that study if I just show you a graph that shows the results. So this study was done in four separate parts, uh, and these are indicated here by the different colored sections here. So the first colored section here in pink is when they started doing systematic testing of all healthcare workers that had symptoms at the hospital. You can see the line there, and that basically tells the positivity rate of these COVID-19 tests. In other words, what percentage of these COVID-19 tests came back positive? At its peak, the positivity rate for these COVID-19 tests was about 21%. Now that's pretty high. Now the next phase of the study, seen here in purple, is when they mandated that all healthcare workers wear masks. Now we need to note that the masks that were worn were surgical masks and not N95 masks. I think that makes it a little bit more applicable to our day-to-day -day lives. The next phase of the study, seen here in yellow, is when they mandated that all patients wear masks. So at this point, all healthcare workers and all patients were wearing masks. Finally, the last phase of the study seen here in green is where they continued to test the positivity rate for COVID-19 tests done on healthcare workers. And as you can see, it's steadily decreasing. So at its height, about 21% of the tests that were done came back positive. And after the intervention of wearing masks, that rate went down to 11%. What's most striking to me though, is the rate at which these lines are changing. So before the intervention, you can see that the positivity rate is increasing pretty dramatically. That's honestly a little alarming. After the intervention, the line starts to decrease at a very steady rate. The difference between the line going up on the left and the line going down on the right, face masks. The next study we're gonna talk about takes us out of the hospital environment into a more day-to-day -day environment, specifically a hair salon. So two hairstylists started having symptoms related to COVID and eventually they tested positive. Now there's a period of time of eight days between when they started having symptoms and when the test came back positive. Here we have our two hair stylists with some coronavirus floating around them there. So there were eight days between when they started having symptoms and when their test results returned. And in those eight days, they continued to see clients and saw a total of 139 clients. 
Now at the salon, there was a mandate that all clients and all the stylists had to wear face masks. So you see them all here with their face masks on. All right, so how many of these 139 clients who were seen by two stylists that had symptoms and tested positive for COVID, how many of them do you think developed symptoms? In fact, none of them did, which is pretty remarkable. They followed them for about 14 days and none developed symptoms. All of them were offered testing for coronavirus and about 50% of them took them up on the testing. And of those that got tested, all of those tests were negative as well. What's even more interesting is that they also looked at the household context of these two stylists. Now, when they were at home, they did not wear masks. So how many of those household contacts do you think got symptoms? In fact, almost all of them. A majority of them developed symptoms and eventually tested positive for COVID. So here you had two people who were symptomatic and who were contagious. Their household contacts all got COVID, but none of the 139 clients got COVID. The difference between those two groups? Face masks. All right, so what do I think about all this? Do I think you should wear a face mask? So many times when I'm discussing issues with my patients, we talk about a risk benefit ratio. As an example, let's say we wanted to start you on a blood pressure medication. Now, anytime we talk about a medication, there are going to be risks involved. You might have a side effect. It might interact with your other medications. We might have to monitor your kidney function, but we also expect there to be benefits. We're going to improve your blood pressure. We're going to reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke, things like that. Now, whether or not we proceed with that intervention, in this case, a blood pressure medication, depends upon the risk benefit ratio. So do the benefits of starting that medicine outweigh the risks? If so, it might be a good idea to go forward with it. Let's carry that same line of reasoning into wearing masks. So what are the risks of wearing a mask? Honestly, from a healthcare medical standpoint, there really aren't any. Now, a lot of people feel uncomfortable when they wear a mask, and I get that. That's real and I hear you but are there really any healthcare risks to it? Not really. There is some data out there about oxygen levels being lower or retention of carbon dioxide, but remember, those are with N95 masks. Those are the very tight fitting masks. That's not what we recommend that you wear. We recommend that you wear a cloth mask or a surgical mask, which really don't carry those risks. So what about the benefits? Hopefully those two studies shed a little bit of light on how it can help us, but honestly, I think there's more to it than that. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So a vast majority of people who get COVID-19 will get mild symptoms. Honestly, it's only a smaller subset of people who would get more severe disease. But here's the thing about wearing masks. We can't just put masks on the people who we think are going to get sick. For it to really work, we have to put masks on everyone. So just masking the vulnerable won't work. For masking to really help flatten the curve and help slow down the spread of this, we all have to buy into this. So what's going on here is we are asking a lion's share of the population to inconvenience themselves a little bit for the sake of the vulnerable few. I use the word inconvenience and I did that intentionally. Perhaps if we're really honest with ourselves, the main risk that we perceive in wearing a mask is the inconvenience of it. Let's face it, they are inconvenient. We would all rather not wear a mask and I think that goes without saying. But here's the important question. Does the risk of inconvenience of wearing a mask, does that outweigh the potential benefit? Some people think that the benefit of wearing masks is very large, but even if you think that the benefit is very small, given that the risks are negligible, isn't it still worth it? When we think that we might be able to slow down the spread or even prevent one or two people from getting the virus who would otherwise get very sick or even die? As a final note, I have many people in my life, both in clinic and in my personal life, who are in the medically vulnerable category. So for me, it's an easy decision. I do think the benefits outweigh the risks and I will continue to wear a mask in public and I hope that you do as well. At the end of the day, it is a small inconvenience in order to show care and to show love for our neighbors around us. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have comments about it, if you agree, if you disagree, please leave them below and we'll go over them together. Is there a topic you'd like to see covered? Leave that down below too. If there's enough interest in it, I will post a video about it and also put a blog up on my website. Thank you again. And if you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button and it would mean a lot to me if you consider subscribing. Hit that bell so that you can get notified when future videos get uploaded. And I'll leave you with one final thought. Please remember that kindness, that's always the best medicine. Y'all take care.